Hello, everyone. Welcome to our class today. The purpose of today's class is to just have fun. I'm going to be giving you guys some practical tips for, you know, if we've never done envelopes before, or I've always printed out a label, where do I begin? Um, and if you've done some envelopes in the past, but you always use the same format and they always look the same, we're going to play with some new ways to personalize our holiday envelopes and hopefully have a lot of fun doing that. Let me start by showing you some inspiration with what I have received in my own mailbox over the years. Now, my kids peeled off a stamp on this one, which I don't blame them because it was so cool. But you can just see, can you imagine how exciting it is to receive something like this in your mailbox during the holiday season? Some of these people are professionals. Some of them are hobbyists. Some are just friends who took time to add some beauty to their holiday cards set aside the ones that I've done. As far as the tools that you need to have on hand today, basically just these handouts and something to write with today. I'll be using various different uh, Meisterstücks and even the uh, mechanical pencil at one point today. Um, and I'll make sure to tell you what I'm using as I do. Now this page is here because as we've studied the different scripts or if you've done the copper plate series with me or American cursive or architectural handwriting, I didn't go a ton into the numbers. So I'm gonna, we'll take a few minutes just to go over the copper plate numbers in particular. Our numbers in copper plate are gonna be one and a half the height of this X height. With American cursive, our numbers are typically smaller. And so it's about the size of the X height. So the same size as the majority of your lowercase letters. For architectural handwriting, our architectural letters are going to be, uh, or numbers are about the same height as our capital letters. Now for block printing, I actually use these same number styles with architectural sometimes. So this is just another style there for you to play with. So with that in mind, I'm gonna just show you, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of kind of some of the important elements that I'm thinking about with these copper plate numbers the first S that I want you to pay attention to is size, which we already talked about. The second S is going to be slant. So this number one has a gentle up curve. It comes down on the slant. If you were wanting to add that faux calligraphy element, that is a downstroke, so we would make that a little bit thicker. The two is one of my favorites. I feel like it is so graceful. And I'm gonna demonstrate the two. Let me do it a little bit larger for you. With our numbers, I like to think of all of them kind of fitting into this large oval shape. If we think of that too fitting in within an oval, that slant comes over. Here's kind of the slant of that middle stroke. It's going to come over quite a bit further to make it look like it's sitting up a bit more straight. The three has this little kind of a miniature two at the top of it. If you think I'm going to do it large again. So almost like you're doing that number two portion of it. And then we're going to come up and around like so. I'm going to skip the four and the five, but I'm going to go down to the six and the nine. The six can be done in one or two strokes. And the six would be done, this would be stroke one that kind of does the left side. And I can come around here and do stroke two on the right side. So let's show you that real fast. And then we're going to move on to envelopes, I promise. So this would be stroke one. And then stroke two comes around like that. We also are going to look at the nine. The nine also follows that oval shape. Sometimes if we're not thinking about um, the oval, it's easy to come down and be like, oh, where are we going with this nine? But if I have this oval shape in my mind, I can think about doing a little mini oval at the top and then a stroke that comes around and I'm envisioning that oval here in my mind. So there is a trick for the nine and the six. Think ovals. And the last one I will show you real fast is the eight because I just think the eight is really pretty. Again, we're thinking overall oval shape and how that eight fits in there, okay? Think about that, so still falling on the slant line if it was cut in half. So I'll do it small here. And you, this upper portion is optional, but it's another fun way that if you're doing a zip code, Kind of having this flag that waves up at the top can be a really fun embellishment. These are like just three of many, 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 many different layout styles um, to get you going and give you some ideas to play with. This would be the most formal style. It's my most commonly requested for weddings and things like that. One of the other ways that, especially if I'm thinking about how can I speed up this process a little bit, I, and I like the look of it, is 
intermixing a script line with a block print line and then another script line and block print. And then there's the option of doing a beautiful script name that really showcases, you know, your ability to wield the pen and make it dance and then do the rest of it in um, a block script. I'm going to start with a, a white envelope because if you guys have ordered envelopes or ordered some cards off of for the holidays is a slanted diagonal um, layout. And so I'm going to grab my pencil here and just do a few lines. Uh, diagonal is very forgiving with layout because people aren't looking at, you know, things being left justified or centered. So with something like this, you can just add the embellishment through your ink choice. And we'll talk about some other options there. I might just go with doing um, the family name instead of saying Mr. and Mrs. Um, so and so. Maybe I'll just do to the Joneses. And you'll notice I didn't give myself a guideline at the top. I am not worried too much about my letters being exactly the same height. Um, again, I feel like having it on a diagonal is a little bit more forgiving for that. And here's that special moment where I remind everybody that we don't have apostrophes. Sorry if my head's getting in the way there. I'll try to sit up properly. Um, if it ends in an S, we are going to add ES to it. That is the same if this were to be a last name that ended in a C, an SH, a CH or an X, um, go ahead and add ES. Otherwise, like for my last name Hoffman, I'm just adding an S to it. There's no apostrophe on that one. Um, and then again, I could do a block script style. Um, I'll just try to make up some address. And we'll talk a little bit more here about, you know, what letters I spill out spell out, sorry. Um, and then just again, mixing it with a fun script. This could be your cursive that you've been practicing. And I have received a beautiful note from um, some of you all. And I appreciate that. I, I don't share my address very much. Um, so I apologize. I actually did receive a request from somebody and I've been looking for their email and I'm sorry if I haven't got back to you because I cannot find your email. So sorry about that. Um, I do I have thought about opening a PO box uh, in the future, but I'll let you guys send mail to your friends and family for now. Um, so this could be North Pole, Alaska, wherever you're sending it to, and then your zip code down here. Um, so really playful. It looks fun. Having the red and the white, you've got some candy cane action going on here. And then you could embellish it with some really fun stamps, something like that, okay? Here is a guideline that I have made that's um, designed for an A7 envelope. There's the dimensions there, which is a pretty standard um, size of envelope. Each one of these layouts up here at the top of your page, it has a different symbol, whether it's a delta or I guess it's an, maybe an omega or a heart. If you wanted to do, let's say, um, the centered, option here. We're going to look for that delta symbol um, real fast. Already nicely spaced for you. Okay. And there's also very, very faintly right here, a center line. Mister, I'm going to try to start at least an inch or maybe like three fourths of an inch from the left side of my envelope. And I'm going to kind of eye air right above, you know, Mister takes about that much space, a little space between letters. Okay, Adam, space, Baker. And then I see where my left finger is and my nib is, and I'm going to kind of center it, shift them both at the same time. And then when I write it, here's my little hack. Let's see if I can zoom in again for you guys. I am not going to flourish very much at the very beginning. Mr. I'm going to just do this all in a monoline style. Adam Baker. In fact, this year, if I get around to my Christmas cards, I will probably be doing them in the American cursive style that we just finished going over. All right. 
not terrible, but also not perfectly centered. So I can see I actually need a little bit more going on over here. And that's where doing my flourish after the fact kind of helps me balance that out. Now, if I realized I needed to do a bit more over here, um, I could have stopped that R earlier and we can flourish on that end. So hooray for flourishes. They fix a world of errors for the zip code. When centering, I start with the middle number first. Then I do the first one. And sometimes I, if it, it lines up nicely with either the top line or the middle line, um, I will do that just to kind of make it look like the design is really meant to go together. And then I fill in these two in between. So that helps me to space my zip code nicely. And I did these letters a little too large, but or numbers, sorry. And adding these little dots between adds that touch of formality and it looks really pretty. Curated set from a gal named Rebecca from Flourish, flourishfinewriting.com. She sent these. Um, and she curates sets that are already like an all the face value that you would need to send um, a holiday envelope. If we wanted to do um, maybe this, where we're doing uh, the mix script. Now this envelope is smaller um, than this. So you could just center it wherever you want these lines to be. So that's a helpful thing to keep in mind is that when you're doing your envelope layouts, you don't want your address to be too far to the bottom and be really bottom heavy. So I try to center my addresses on the envelope so it's not really bottom heavy. For the zip code, when centering, I start with the middle number first, then I do the first one. And sometimes I, if it, it lines up nicely with either the top line or the middle line, um, I will do that just to kind of make it look like the design is really meant to go together. And then I fill in these two in between. So that helps me to space my zip code nicely. And I did these letters a little too large, but or numbers, sorry. And adding these little dots between has that touch of formality and it looks really pretty. Curated set from a gal named Rebecca from Flourish, flourishfinewriting.com. She sent these. Um, and she curates sets that are already like an all the face value that you would need to send um, a holiday envelope. If we wanted to do um, maybe this, where we're doing uh, the mix script. Now this envelope is smaller um, than this. So you could just center it wherever you want these lines to be. So that's a helpful thing to keep in mind is that when you're doing your envelope layouts, you don't want your address to be too far to the bottom and be really bottom heavy. So I try to center my addresses on the envelope so it's not really bottom heavy. For the order of names, the easiest way for me to explain it is rank first, then the rule is often ladies first. However, one of the very common exceptions to that is if I am writing out, you know, to Mr. Uh, I'll do this fast. And Mrs. You know, John Scott. In that case, John's name um, never gets, sorry, I cannot think and write fast. <laughs> um, it's not going to get separated. Okay. We do not separate. It wouldn't be Mr. John and Mrs. Samantha Scott because then you've got John's first name separated from his last name. So in this case, it's Mr. First, Mr. and Mrs and then the gentleman's name. But otherwise, like in this case here, where we've got Amy Fuller and George Stotts with different last names, Amy's gonna go first. And because they are married, they get this special word and in between their names. For titles, you can use professional titles. In our scenario here with Amy and George, we are gonna be writing their names separately. And so Amy wouldn't use Mrs. Even though she's married, it would be Ms. So Mrs. is a term you, she would use with her husband's name, which in this case, she hasn't taken his name. So we are going to write the term you know, ladies first. We're gonna follow that rule. So it'll be Ms. Amy Fuller. I gotta write faster. Miss Amy Fuller 
and they are married. So we're going to, I can't fit it all in one line. So we break it before the and. So they get an and here. If they were not married, but living at the same address, you would still write their names on separate lines, just not include the and there. And Mr. George Stotts. Okay. It has an abbreviation like sweet, boulevard, circle, all of those things. We are spelling it out. I just left justify things here. So they would get, see if I can write fast. We will not street. I'm running out of space here, but it would, you would actually spell out Northeast. Okay. And apartment numbers, they have an apartment number as well. Apartment number spell out all on its own really helps those not get, um, you know, sorted incorrectly. Apartment. Now here is one of the few scenarios where I would break that rule of spelling out the numbers because again, we're trying to help somebody um, have it find its location. So for apartments, I would use the, the numerical number. Hope you guys enjoy the opportunity to um, think about ways that you can embellish your envelopes. I would love to see what you all create. And um, I'm wishing you all the warmest, happy holidays. And we'll see you in the new year.